In today's episode, we are exploring the future of workplace learning. To help me do that, we are joined by Mike Barnesser, a seasoned learning and development professional. Mike has served as an instructional designer and LMS administrator throughout his career and currently is the instructional design manager at SAE International, where he designs professional development opportunities for the automotive and aerospace professionals. I have had a chance to work with Mike in a variety of settings and know that he'll bring insights to today's session. So welcome, Mike. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited about this because there's a lot going on in the uh, industry of workplace learning with VR and AI and, and all these fun things. And it's kind of a, a place of chaos right now. So I'm, I'm excited to hear your thoughts. And I know um, you and I have had some chances to talk just individually, and we've had some mm -hmm. pretty uh, exciting conversations. So let's get to that. Um, the first thing I'm just curious about, like what changes are you experiencing right now in the way that you're thinking about or creating learning experiences? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we're being challenged with currently is the um, shift toward personalized learning journeys. And I think this is just an evolution of the kind of curated learning design of the 2010s. So now with the use of AI and incorporation of that into learning management systems and other tools, we are thinking of our learning opportunities now more of what is that journey from A to B and focusing on that outcome of what, what learners are really looking to get out of these, these journeys. Um, so that whenever they finish this series of learning opportunities, where are they going to be? So no longer are we thinking about a learning opportunity as just a single point in time, attend this course or complete this e-learning or watch this video. Now it is always a series of products that um, are cohesive and have this uh, kind of interwoven thread through them to take them to a point where they can achieve that outcome. Um, so with that, time and duration is, is, is a factor now. So our learning journeys tend to take longer because obviously it's more than one opportunity. Um, and I think this is just, like I said, just an evolution of where the learning opportunity or where the learning industry is going, uh, just with the use of AI and with the evolution of tools, uh, to develop these learning opportunities. So does it change like your structural design process? Does it change the way you think about learning? Or I think I'm hearing you say that it's the evolution of it, meaning it's just different tools, but we're not really thinking about learning differently, or are we? Our process has changed because it incorporates more of a UX model, um, where our, whereas, whereas instead of just looking at a single learning opportunity, you're now looking at what is that experience from a learner, for a learner to get from one point to another. Um, so that experience tends to incorporate a lot of different things, right? So. Whereas where we used to think about that experience just being like a, a classroom session or any learning course or something like that, a one-time thing. Now it's, what are all these pieces? What are all these learning objects that are part of this journey? Um, so, so really for us, it's shifted more towards that and more, more thinking about what are all the pieces that this person can do to complete this versus what are all the learning activities within this singular event to complete this. Which is a really interesting concept because it you know i think about conversations you and i have had but also what we do at legacy learning like there's we're, we're trying to think of learning as like the holistic picture that like learning isn't an event right and right. so you're just that's really an interesting way to kind of bring everything together it's almost like i, I don't know how you have felt but i have felt as in the learning development field for many years especially when you're working for a company that you're limited by, you have limitations to what you could actually do, that you're not really creating learning, you're creating things that look and feel like learning. And I think what you're saying is, now as AI comes into the, the picture, we can start thinking about it as a holistic approach. Like, how do we actually help people really shift behaviors and learn? Right, exactly. So now the tools are getting finally to the point where they're getting in place to support what we've been trying to do for years. Before it was yeah. kind of just like, here's these things that we put together in what we call a course, but now it's really what's taking that person from one to another. When does that hit them looking at that persona of that person? Like when do they need this skill so that you can kind of trickle it out at that time? You can set that all up now in learning management systems, the more advanced ones anyway. So it really gives you that capability to take that journey, make it point in time and make it as relevant and useful as possible to that learner because. I mean, we all know as learning professionals that learners are looking for the most um, 
useful and relevant learning experiences. And that is what motivates them to complete and, and utilize the skills they learn from those experiences. Yeah, that's a really cool. I kind of hung up on that right now. It's a really cool thought because I mean, you and I have worked together. We, I think we've always tried to do this holistic thing. And so it's, you know, the new tools that are coming to the market, we're able to, to, to do this. Hey, learn when it's relevant. And also if we start creating these experiences that trigger reflection, then people can learn when they need it, which is a really cool place. So what do you think that we in the learning development field need to be thinking about over the next year in order to prepare for changes that are coming? I think a lot of upskilling is needed. I mean, the same thing that you and I have talked about, this is kind of the new evolution with the use of AI now that Google was in the early 2000s, where how do we use AI in a way that complements and enhances our process and creates efficiencies so that we can focus on the design, right? Um, there's all these new tools out there now, no longer are, especially from an e-learning standpoint, is everything just fitting in the box of it's a storyline course or it's a rise course or it's a captivate course. Now it's really looking at what are the tools available and what benefits are they giving to me? Um, and what benefits will they have on my students that I can use in a, in a beneficial way? So really what I, what I would say that how do we need to think as L&D professionals is upskill in the use of AI, upskill in the use of the tools, be agile knowing that everything doesn't fit into a box anymore. Um, there's a lot more variety out there and you have to kind of understand what the pros and cons of each of those options are to create the best experience for your learners. And with sure that too, sorry, with that too, I think there's a lot of new data available. I mean, we've, we've talked about this for years, right? All SCORM courses supply data to us. All LMSs read that data and we can get reports on that data for how our learners are doing, what they're scoring, what their interactions are, what they're clicking on, things like that. Tin Can API came out and it gave us an increased ability to report on data. Now I think the tools are out there or, or are getting out there to be able to look at that data and really analyze it to look at how our learners are doing and how they're progressing. Because related to that learner journey, we really want to look at over time how that learner is progressing through our journey, right? It's no longer just, they did this in this course, they clicked on this, they did that, they scored this. Now it's, where is the growth happening? How are they um, mastering the concepts toward the outcomes of that course. And I think the new data available to us through these new LMSs and, and new analytics tools is really helping us to be able to analyze that uh, and, and really evaluate the usefulness of our products. So when you talk about upskilling, you're saying learning development professionals need to upskill themselves, or are you talking about upskilling, like the focus of the learning experience is going to be upskilling? I think it starts with really upskilling yourselves, right? I mean, I, I have this challenge in my role. There's tools out there on LinkedIn every day that pop up and I'm like, what is that? What does that do? And yeah. and you go look at it and you figure out what are the pros and cons of this? Can I use it? Is it something I can incorporate? And there's with that, all the competition out there, right? So there's the same tools that do different things in different ways and yeah. different tools to do the same thing in different ways, right? So it's how do I use that? What is it? What is the benefits? How is it going to really enhance my process? Because there are, I mean, let's face it, with the use of AI now and the incorporation of that into tools, there are a lot of efficiencies to be gained. I mean, things that I used to have to take a day to develop in the past can be created now with AI in right. minutes, right? So where does that time go for me? I can really then focus on the design and look at what do I do to, where can I use that time now to enhance my process and really create a benefit for that learner? in a way that I couldn't before because I had to spend all this time building a horse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the tools that sell themselves as AI in the learning development field right now feel very, and actually just generally, they feel gimmicky to me. But I think it's your early. point, yeah, it's crazy early, but certainly like content development, like <laughs> you and I talked about this last time we had this conversation, but I, you know, there's a lot of debate with, um, the education system like your kids cheating your students cheating uh and and i gotta be honest i look at this stuff that i, I use ai to generate some content and if i just published it out there I'm like everybody's gonna know that this was ai generated because to me it's nobody delves into anything nobody and you know but ai always says we're gonna delve into it or if you see a title that says unlock it's probably AI, even though I generally like that at first, I was like, oh, that's a cool way, but now it's every time. So it, 
it, it does, even the content development, which I think is probably the most robust part of AI right now, is the the creative development. It still feels a little gimmicky though. You still need us. You need people to look at it and be like, hey, that's not exactly what what I want or need. So yeah, and the way I use AI is, is in our prof in, in my vertical industry verticals, right with aerospace and automotive. The training sets are not always there with the AI tools, and 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 the content doesn't always come out, or vaguely comes out, or rarely comes out um, in a way that we can use it. And a lot of that content doesn't exist because we're using we're using proprietary materials to create our courses. So I really can't use AI in a content way, but what I can use it for is idea generation, right? So I can say, hey, give me an idea for a storyboard for this course using ten modules, 